morning, guys. Welcome to today's video. Yeah, we're here, Mom. We're Do we have. we have a trick for you guys? This is so crazy. This is so crazy. Okay, so Gabby, tell them. Tell them what we do. 66% of the world is right-eyed. I'm right. And the rest is left-eyed? Mm -hmm. Okay, so how do you tell if you're right-eyed or left-eyed? You put your hands in a triangle, um, focus on an object, and close each eye till it moves. And when it moves, the eye that makes it moves is what eye you are, right? What eye you aren't. Oh, what eye you aren't? You are not. Whatever I makes it stay still. Sorry. The eye that you are? Oh, I'm left-eyed. So that must mean I'm left-brained. Is it the same, do you think? I don't know. Oh, so we're all left. <laughs> I don't know. Are you even looking at all? Yeah. Are you I'm looking at an object? Okay, I'm gonna try it again. You guys try it in the comment and tell me what you are. Left brained or right brained? 66% of the world is right brained. That's why we're different. Oh no, I'm right brained. I think we are all right brained. Wait. I'm confused. I gotta do it again. So what you do is you make a triangle and look at an object through the triangle. Close one eye, then the other. The eye that makes it move is the eye that you're not. <laughs> so we all did it again. I had to turn the camera off. I should have left the camera on. It was funny. But what eye are you? Right. What eye are you? Right. <laughs> and, and I'm right too. So we're all part of that 66%. We'll have to get dad to do it when he comes back. He's out there getting my car fixed, getting some stuff fixed on my car, but that's exciting. Except I love being left left odd. I'd rather be like the odd man out, the different one, the not 66%. How do you feel about being average, normal? I like right better. You like right better? Yeah. What do you? It's always right about everything. Yeah, right is right, <laughs> but left is not wrong. That's what I want to tell you guys about. Horses are making their way inside, making their way downtown. No. <laughs> What are you trying to say? I don't think good? That goes from stuck in my head. <laughs> I know. I don't want to sing that all day. That always happens to me and somebody starts singing a song. You know what song I've been singing all day? I mean, it's only 8 a.m. <laughs> you stuck it in my head. But I'm a morning person. I wake up like this every day. What's that rock? It sucks. There's rocks everywhere. Is it from your dog? Yeah, it's from your dog. Yesterday There's always she, rocks. You should have when dad went outside with them. It's a brick that I put up. Daisy brought it back in because yeah. I threw it. Um, yeah. Of course, she's going to go get it. One of her dogs is a dog, is a rock catcher. That's okay. I think that's part of her her breed. She likes to carry rocks. Does yeah. seeing caterpillars everywhere mean anything? Yeah, seeing caterpillars everywhere means that winter is coming. Anyway, welcome to today, you guys. Whether you're left brained or right brained, we're left all eyed equal. Or both eyes. Oh, left eyed or right eyed, we're or all both equal. Eyes. And that's why I wanted to tell you guys really quick, before today's video really gets started, I wanted to explain to you guys how much I've been learning about neurodiversity. I keep saying it. And basically what it means is this. Well, basically it means a lot more than this, but this is the part that I'm gonna share with you guys today. So we are all quirky. We all have our own differences. And uh, some of my differences are the way that my brain works is that I associate feelings to everything. Like um, seasons, I have a feeling for winter, I have a feeling for spring, I have a feeling for summer, and so when I see those seasons in my head, I feel the feeling more than I see the season, and it's really difficult to explain. But I attach feelings to every single thing. I attach feelings to colors. I attach feelings to things that I see. I also don't process the things that I see the same way that some other people process them. My brain works so uniquely different than some other people's brains. Can you think of a way that your brain doesn't work the same as normal? Um. Yeah, that's it right there. <laughs> Can you think of a way that your brain doesn't work the same? Yes. Yeah, do you want to share it or no? Mm. We're not ready she to share 50 it? Years in the bathroom. Yep, Gabby spends 50 years in the bathroom. We don't know why, but she does. She's, slow. <laughs> She's just slow in the mornings. She's just slow moving, and it's true. She is slow in the way that she processes things. And not that she's actually slow, but I process and move fast. And my no, wrists I don't have a bone. Yeah, I don't process, I just move fast. Gabby takes time to process. That's probably a way, better way to say it. Um, I don't <laughs> So less empathy than others. She I has less that. empathy than others. So she doesn't feel, she, she's not, she doesn't have that. Like I'm over empathetic, for definite over empathetic. Gabby's under empathetic. Sophie, what are you? No wrist. An over, no, no wrist. Do you know what empathetic means? No. It means you're an emotional person. You feel. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, she is. 
And she also doesn't have any bones in her wrists, and I've noticed that before, and I think this is why it's she struggles with Maybe it's because I crack my knuckles too much. No, I don't think so. She doesn't feel sadness either, which is fun. She doesn't feel sadness, which is so different. I can only cry when I'm angry. When I'm sad, I just feel numb. I'm like, well, why do you cry? Because I'm angry. Yeah, I cry when I'm angry too. And I cry when I'm sad, and I cry when I'm happy. And Gabby doesn't like that. She's not like that. And Sam's the same. Although Sam cries a lot when he's sad. Like when he watches TV shows that are sad, he cries. Sometimes when I'm happy, I just start crying for no reason. Yeah, same. Okay, so anyways, I have just told you guys how different my brain works. And they've told you something that their brain works differently that they've noticed. And always in life, people try and hide those differences in the, in the way that their brain works. Because we fear being different all the time. We always want to try and not be different. Especially like things like what Gabby was saying about how she's not emotional to an extreme and because people judge you and they, and they say that there's something wrong with you and that you're not right and that you're not normal and neurodiversity means that to me it means that the world needs all different kind of brains so we need brains that are over emotional like Sophie and I we need brains that are in the middle that have like a normal emotional side and we need brains like Gabby that are more analytical is that the word that doesn't that she's under emotional but she has other strengths lacking that lacking emotions. She lacks emotions, and but she has I'm other strengths that make her that make up for that. That make her completely different, and and her strengths put her in a different. Hey, okay. At least I'm calm and bad situations. Yeah, when Sophie and I'd be freaking out, Ooh. Gabby's like, "Oh my gosh, you're freaking out over yeah, nothing." Like, meanwhile, shut up. yeah. <laughs> meanwhile. Uh, yeah, yeah. So anyways, let me just say this before I end this segment of today's mental health with Laura is that typically the average person will develop everything on average. You learn to walk and then talk and then potty train and then read. But then there are other people who learn to walk and talk at the exact same time. But then they struggle to potty train until they're five years old. But at two years old, they're already reading entire books. And people get stressed out on the one thing that they're not doing well, which is potty training. And they think, oh my gosh, my child is not normal. What should I do? I'm so worried. I'm so stressed because my child didn't potty train till five. But they were reading entire books by themselves at two. I think it's time, you guys. I think it's time that we accept and embrace our neuro differences and promote our strengths and be who we are inside the way that God made our brain and the way that our brain works. I have a question. What? Was it a five page book? No, like well, a 500 page book. Well, kids, there are kids who can read 500 page books at, at five. But instead of thinking that these people are different, let's think of them as normal. Let's think of neurodiversity as being normal. Let's be excited about the strengths that people have. Let's not even care about the weaknesses. Let's just promote and accept and love people for how they're different. That's the way that I look at the world. So when Gabby says that I'm part of the 66% that sees with my right eye, <laughs> Gabby says, let's go, we're cold. Anyway, embrace being different. Embrace all your differences and love them. And uh, those are the things that I see when I talk to you and when I get to know you and know that I accept you for who you are. And so accept yourself for who you are and life will change. They're saying, let's just go, ignore her, let's go. The pony parade, Penny and I are always the last ones. Always the last ones and she's a little dirty, not too bad. To wait for the door to open. Oh, it is chilly today. All right. They might run and they might run with Today the first day that my girl is gonna run. Well, I'm out here, don't run because the ground is really hard. Don't run. Is she gonna roll? That was my question. Because Daisy, please roll, please roll. Daisy is over there watching. Daisy's over there she playing with roll. rocks. All right, let's see. Is it gonna happen? So my hope with Penny and Daisy, you guys saw in yesterday's video, and she's been doing this regularly, is that when Penny rolls, Daisy thinks that she's playing. And my goal and my wish is that our horses learn to play with Daisy and learn to accept her as a baby puppy dog that she is and learn to accept her kind nature. There's a ball beside Daisy's rock and she chooses the rock. <laughs> but now she has the ball because the rock's too hard to carry. Because she loves rocks and that's okay. It's true, most dogs probably would prefer a ball. 
But Daisy prefers a rock. Neurodiversity, you guys. Uh-oh. Can you turn the fence off, please? Yeah, there's a problem. Right. Wow. Wow. So inside the barn, we have a heated water bucket. And, uh-oh. The herd is on the move. The herd is on the move. Typically, we put the horses in the winter field by now with all the, like, uh, the ground getting rained on and getting soft and hard and soft and hard so that they don't tear it up. But I like them being able to like f forage for as long as they can. Daisy could have went up with the other dogs and been in the nice warm house, which is she's cold, at, but she stayed with me. Yeah, Daisy does not go anywhere without Sophie. <laughs> I'd love to hear from other Dalmatian owners or past Dalmatian owners. Is that a Dalmatian thing or is that a deaf dog thing? I never know. I, I never know. I think it's a Dalmatian one thing. Person too. Animals, one but person. Like love other people too. Yeah. I think so too. You need to how many did you get? Twelve. Twelve of these babies. Do you want me to help you? Let's throw them in. In the past people have made fun of Sam's stacking abilities. Sam, people have made fun of your stacking abilities. Yeah, well, we're gonna make fun of this stacking. <laughs> I'm gonna throw them in. <laughs> Lazy man's way, but you know what? It works for me. It is almost time to put the girls in for the winter. So at night they'll go in. I've loved having them outside for the winter. I feel like they get more opportunity to stretch their legs and not be cramped up and stuff. But I also think, oh, I'll go in here. Ooh. But I also think it's good for them to not be out when the ice is there because sometimes the arena gets ice in it and we'll be closing the arena door to prevent the ice coming in. So soon when it's so cold and I want to make sure that they're nice and warm, they're going to be going in. So Sam is stacking up on shading. Throw them right in there. <laughs> I need to take a picture. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wow, is the dog going to fit? Eight. Eight. I think eight. I like to count and double check because did you guys know that karma is real and it affects every single aspect of your life. So every time you like look at that driver in the car beside you and you get road rage and you think bad things about him, out there somewhere someone is going to think bad things about you. And every time you accidentally take something, like you know how you're at the store and you go through the self-checkout and then you get to the car and there's like this little thing that fell through and you didn't see it and you thought like oh well it's not that big of a deal and you already got it out of the store like what are you gonna do take it back take it back because how karma works is that even though you accidentally didn't mean to steal something one day probably soon somebody will accidentally didn't mean to steal something from you and karma never just discriminates between something that costs two dollars and something that costs two hundred dollars or two thousand dollars like every time you do something the same thing will happen back to you and, and you might not it might take forever for you to realize it like it took me forever to realize that karma is real and that you need to be really careful i make sure that i try and always um never make mistakes like that I don't want to come back to me. And I don't think I think I'm perfect because I'm not like, I have trouble still. Sometimes there are a couple people in the world that really stress me out and make me feel frustrated and angry and push my buttons and I let them even though I know better. So I'm not perfect. I still am working on that. Come on, Penny. Look out, here she comes. Woman that I love. Too bad you'll never know. That's my girl. Look at her run to me. Stop because there's mud. That's a girl. Yeah. Good girl. And she stops before she gets to the mud. I'm not joking. Something changed. The last the last two times, I like the last week, something changed. And I think it's me riding her. Everybody said that me learning Penny on the ground was gonna make a difference to how I ride her. Like our relationship under saddle, I guess is what they said. So I think it did, but I think it did it in a way that I wasn't expecting. I feel like now that I ride Penny, she's different to me. Does that make sense? I feel like Penny needed 
me to bond with her on the ground so that when I rode her, she changed towards me. And then when I rode her, yeah, does that make sense? Does that make sense? I don't know how to describe it. But she's different. She's different to me. Like, she, she's telling me something that she's never told me before. She's saying, Laura, I trust you. Laura, save me. Laura, I believe in you. And she's never said that to me before, even though she has trusted me and she has loved me. Never before has she physically been like, telling me like she tells me now. All right, sweet princess, up and down to give you a brush, but right now we are going to set up the Christmas tree because it's going to be Christmas, okay? How many bags of shavings did he get? <laughs> 12 bags of, 12 bags of shavings for what? 12 bags of Christmas. I See, I'd just be shoving that sucker right up there. Gabby makes sure everything's good before she does it. Gabby is the man that I... I guess Dad always checks them because sometimes those get stuck and then this falls down and that's how that happens. Oh. So, it, it's that time of year. We're getting ready to put all of our Christmas decorations oh. up. We are working on our tree currently. Uh, Sophie found this little dog that we bought last year and we're going to see how our puppies like it. Everybody else is scared of it. <laughs> okay, push it back a little bit and do it again. Go over there so I can see it. <laughs> Ruby just be chilling. Nothing bothers Ruby. This thing is terrifying. We are gonna announce the giveaway winners now. It is nighttime on the day by day house. We got our Christmas tree half set up. Mm. Yeah, I gave up on putting ornaments on it. Yeah, we gave up a little. But anyways, we're going to do our giveaway from Virtue Soap Company. That um, It's an amazing company that we love that makes soap for you, your horse, and your dogs. Um, and they're giving away a beautiful basket to one of our lucky viewers. And we're going to pick the viewer right now. We already picked her. Gabby, you want to tell who's winning? I can't pronounce that username. <laughs> What? Camilla. Kim. The username. Where's the username? Up at the top. Oh, K M Reese. Yeah, no. K M Reese ten, also known as Kim Reese. You're the winner. I'm gonna send along your information to Virtue Soap, Virtue Soap Company, and show her that you're the winner. And then, and then you can send her your address and all the stuff that you need to collect your prize. I wanted to tell you guys that we're hoping to do more giveaways throughout this holiday season. And we do have another one coming up really soon. Uh, so you'll have another chance to win something. This is also horse related and super fun. Super exciting. Do you guys know what it is, what we're giving away? No. The thing that we picked out yesterday. I'm so confused. The thing that I said, hey, look at all these and pick one out. Oh. We're gonna give one of those away too. So don't worry if you did not win, if your name is not Kim Reese, don't worry at all because you still have another chance and then possibly more chances after that. That is our goal for this holiday season to thank you guys so much for being a part of our lives. That is it for today's video. We will see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching. And congratulations, Kim. Don't you know that you're beautiful?